Chuck selling the stuff to the kids. You know how bad it is? The sugar is horrible. The chocolate, the Reese's, horrible. But with that money, Chuck gave me a donation to give to my rescue group. I'm very involved in Animal Rescue. And if any of you want to foster this summer or you'd like to be involved, look me up. But Chuck gave me a huge donation to Aussie Rescue, and they love that. We just got another. 11 puppies in. They just rescued another mommy. So that money went to help puppies. So it's a good thing. Okay? And this is Connor and Sarah Connor's MS Foundation, too. So Chuck doesn't raise the money for his gambling addiction or his alcohol. He raises it for the good causes. So there's that. Just so we finish that. And then I'd like to introduce the next group who has a very. We need Russo to be here, though. Oh, he's here. Okay. Thank you. Very special presentation that I know nothing about, but I know bitches be crazy. <laughs> so here we go. So crazy. So you crazy. Know how crazy I am. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm Hi, Chuck. Hi. How are you? Hi, Chuck. I'm better. 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 Oh, sorry, Chuck. Oh, all right. We we're known for poems, so yeah. Just, okay. At least we will be after this. Okay, map, map. 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 The term used to describe various forms of torture applied to children of all ages in schools around the world. Our hearts are on a slippery slope you're being subtracted from our school. We can't put a number on how we'll cope, and we're sad because it's so uncool. We can always count on you to save us from those drills. And if our calculations are correct, you'll send over some chocolate thrills. <laughs> During fire drills, I send them chocolate all the time. <laughs> A little no, what, where's that? There he is. He's on his phone again. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> I have to check email. <laughs> the sum of your talents are quite infinite. There's no new addition that will compare. Not many people can educate or be willing to take on a dare. You have strived for higher education. You're the king of all that is math. But you're also very funny and never obtuse, doing things that always make us laugh. We giggled in D.C. when you showed us your clothing list. Your wife wrote down everything to wear so that not a day could possibly be missed. You've heard some of these stories. A bird pooped on your jacket twice. You fell asleep everywhere. We took pictures of you snoring, and you didn't even care. <laughs> then there were all the times that you fell. So two ladies bought you a hat. <laughs> you wore it across our campus one day and couldn't get it up after that. <laughs> When they bought this hat, it said, help, I've fallen and can't get it up. So I put it on my head, and I walked across campus without being blacked out. And some, some great like, Mr. Clegg, what do you mean by you can't get it up? I said, how dare you, this little kid, and he's just going, look at your hat, you can't get it up. That's before sex ed in seventh grade. Before they had their sex ed. So, and these say I had to black it out. <laughs> we are worried that in the years to come, there will be no candy during drills. And where in the world are we going to send all those kids who act like pills? <laughs> all in all, you're number one. You're a prime teacher in our hearts. No one else can measure down to you. You're the best 
with all the smarts. We will try to be rational and happy for you and your gladness, but there's no other way to say it. Sir, exponential will be our sadness. Well, Mr. Clay, we must say that it certainly has been fun. Yet all good things must come to an end, but you'll always be Russo's number one! I want it to be known that at the end of the year, seventh grade teachers got a little tired of some of their children and they were going to be eighth graders next year so they just send them over to my room and I'd take four or five of them just sit them in the room and I would just go around and say I'm your future and you'd be very wary of that and they would do that and that was my favor and my gift to them but the best part was sending the chocolate across and fire girls yeah not getting in trouble yeah uh -huh. and then Don an explanation is in order for the number one uh -huh. so on the east coast trip it's very important that we you know we go to the best places we stay in the nicest places because our kids are very respectful we demand that of those children and so we have kind of a process when we check in the hotels we have certain staff that checks the luggage certain staff that gives out the tickets certain staff that goes into the lobby at the bottom of the elevators and addresses the girls to one elevator and the boys to another and certain staff that goes up on the boys' floor and the girls' floor. So I just so happen one day to be the staff member of Buskets in early. I go to the guys' floor, and I'm up at the guys' floor, and I'm standing there. And the guys see in the elevator, and they think nothing's going on. I'm like this. The door's open, ding! And they're like, ah! And they see me, I'm like, shh! Go to your room. And that's, what I, that's how I address them. We're getting to the end of that whole trip, and all of a sudden I hear this crazy elevator coming out. Crazy elevator. I'm like this, right at the door. Door opens, ding! I'm like, and it's Chuck. <laughs> With a series of students. They're the last group coming in. Nice young men. Chuck's like, and they're behind him. I think he forgets that. <laughs> then again, remember, I'm, I'm, I, let me just preface this with this. What do they do? Fire you? It doesn't matter, right? So, I go, would you? And he goes, fuck you! <laughs> and there are these three, four kids behind him and they go, ah! They fall on the ground. And I'm like, shh. You guys, you guys, they're like, oh my god, Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay. And he's like, oh crap. <laughs> he didn't realize what he was doing. Again, I apologize in advance. Um, and you guys, and they're like, they're turning the corner. I'm like, you guys have to go to your room, go to your room. They're like, the whole time. Like, stop, come here, come here. All he was doing was saying, I'm number one. I'm number one. And so the rest of the trip, those kids will look at me and they go, you're number one, Mr. Russo. And I go, yes, I am. <laughs> Amazing, amazing, beautiful ornaments. I actually should probably thank Donna because I'm gonna give a picture. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I gotta get him something. What what do we get? So I'm shopping, shopping, shopping at Christmas. I found this Dockers golf style hat. Okay, hey, he likes it, put it in a bag, shove it in his box. Every day for the next year. Miss Moss, Miss Moss, I love the hat. I wear it every day. It's my favorite hat. I love it. 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 Best gift I ever got. I'm like, wow, it doesn't take much to, to please you, does it? <laughs> so I thought, if he wears it every day, it's going to be worn out. So I had to give him a couple more to use during his retirement. So there you go. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Ah, bon,